Hello and welcome to this last section um, of the syllabus for the PAT. Um, and this topic is about problem solving. Um, and the syllabus is particularly vague about what this means. Um, but the best way I can think to describe this uh, topic is puzzles. That's essentially <laughs> what this is. But the main skill that you're going to need to know for these problem solving questions is uh, you're going to have to learn to adapt what is described in words to mathematical equations and then manipulate those to come to the answers that they require. Also, there aren't many past example questions that cover this topic exactly, um, but I've tried to find the ones that I can. And actually, both of them seem to have mistakes in them, <laughs> which is iconic. Um, this mistake is very minor. Uh, we just go A, B, D rather than A, B, C. So this question says that a bathroom contains three rubber ducts, red, green, and blue, of identical shape and density, but different overall sizes. And then the following observations are made. The first one is that the length of a red duck is equal to the length of a blue duck added to that of a green duck. So that written mathematically would be length of R is length of blue plus length of green. Then the next one is that the area of the base of the green duck is four times larger than the area of the base of the blue duck. So that is, this is the base of the green duck and it's four times larger than the base of the blue duck. And then finally, uh, the blue duck has a mass of three grams. So I've just said that mass of blue is equal to three times 10 to the minus three kilograms. Um, and we also know that uh, mass is the density times the volume. And our volume is um, the length cubed. And we know this because we've been told that for objects of any shape, the surface area is proportional to the square of the object size and the volume is proportional to the cube of its size. So we're assuming that it is a cube shaped duck, which is a brash assumption, but here we are. <laughs> so with this information, we want to work out the masses of the red and green ducks. Um, and uh, one last bit of information that we're told actually is when fully submersed, the green duck displaces a total mass of water of 32 grams. So we want to know what the density of the ducks are. And the important information that we draw from that is um, when a duck of a certain volume goes into the water, it will displace an equal volume. So we want to know from the mass of water that's been displaced what its equivalent volume would be. And then from that, we will be able to work out the volume of the green duck. So this is what I called D here. So I said that, uh, the volume of the green duck is the length of the green duck cubed, uh, and that is equal to the uh, volume of water displaced, which is the mass divided by the density. And then we came up with this as our volume for the green duck. So if we take the cube root of that, then we can find the length of the green duck. Um, and then from this equation here, um, B, we can say if we take the square root of both sides, then we could say that LG is equal to 2LB. Um, and thus LB is half LG. And we know LG, so we can work out the length of the blue duck. And then from this first equation, we know the length of the blue duck. We know the length of the green duck. So we just need to add them up to get the length of the red duck. And then lastly, we want the density of the ducks. So we know the mass of the blue duck. Um, and now that we know the length of the blue duck, we can work out the volume of the blue duck. So that would be the length of the blue duck cubed. And then for the density, we can divide the mass by the volume. And we get this as the density of all the ducks. And then finally, we can work out the masses of all of the ducks since we know the lengths so we know their volume and we know their density because the density of all the ducks are the same so we can just um 
rearrange uh, density as mass over volume uh, for an expression for the mass and stick that in your calculator and we get these answers. So this is the second and last question that I could find that exercised these problem solving skills. Um, but this one also has a mistake. They accidentally said that the large box is nine times smaller than the small box, which doesn't make sense. Uh, it has to be nine times bigger than the base area of the small box. Um, but bearing that in mind, uh, we need to mathematically come up with expressions for all of the conditions that we've been given. And the thing that we're after are the lengths of the three different boxes and the ratios of the width to the height and the width to the length of the boxes. So before we go into conditions A, B, C, D, and E, um, it's worth noting that we actually have two uh, equations given to us in the beginning of the question. And that is that um, all three of the boxes have the same ratio of width to length and height to length. So from that, we can say that uh, the height divided by the width for all of them is a constant, and the length divided by the width for all of them is a different constant. Um, so just bear that in mind, because we will need that later. So condition A says that eight small boxes fit neatly inside one medium box. So what that means is that the volume of the medium box is equal to eight times the volume of the small boxes. And here I've just called uh, the dimensions width, height, length, um, and I've put a subscript describing whether it's a small, medium, or big box that we're referring to. I decided to go big rather than large because we already have L for length. So then condition B says the length of the small box is the same as the height of the medium box. Uh, that's quite self-explanatory. C says the base area or width times length of the large box is nine times bigger than the base area of the small box. So nine times width uh, small length small is equal to width big length big. Then D says the lengths of all three boxes added together is 2.4. So we have length small plus length medium plus length big is 2.4. And then finally, the width of the medium box is twice the height of the small box. So width medium is two times height small. Now, we have all of these equations, but it, the difficult part is working out what to do with them. Um, and don't get me wrong, this took me more than six minutes to do um, and to find the correct combination of things to do. And even this is probably more of a roundabout way than is ideal. Um, but first, what I said was I used condition A and I replaced um, the length and the height to be in terms of the width because we have a common width in these equations. And I subbed in the alpha and beta so that it would cancel on both sides. And we are left with an expression that says that eight times um, width small cubed is width medium cubed. And then we could take the cube root of both sides and we have uh, two times width small is width medium. Next, what I did was I took expression E, which said that width medium is two times the height small. Uh, and I popped that in to A here to say that width small is height small. And then that tells us straight away that our height to width ratio is one. Because if it, that's the case uh, for, it, for small, so we have the subscript small for both of these, then it's the case for all of them because they all have the same ratio. So we know that alpha is one. Next, um, I took expression E again. Um, and then knowing that alpha is one, then I could say that the width is equal to the height. So I changed width medium to height medium. And here we say that height medium is two times height small. So that means that height small is half of the height of the medium box. And just bear that in mind for later. So next I looked at condition B, uh, which said that length small is equal to height medium. And then we worked out uh, height medium in the previous part to say that it was two times uh, height small. So I replaced those. And we know that alpha is one, so we can say that height small is equal to width small. And then this gives us an expression 
for the length and the width of the same size box. So we can work out the length to width ratio. Um, and in this case, the beta is two. Unfortunately, we're not done here. Um, there's still more to the question. We need to know the length of the different uh, boxes as well. So for this, um, I use the fact that um, nine times width small times length small is equal to width big times length big, which was condition C. And then I use the fact that length divided by width is beta, or is two now, um, to sub to replace this length here to get uh, an expression purely in terms of width. And whether we knew beta or not, it cancelled on both sides anyway, so it wouldn't matter at which point you did this. Um, so I found out that three times the small width is uh, the big width. Um, but we also know the ratio um, of width to length. So we can replace that back in and say that three times the length divided by the ratio, which was two, is equal to the length divided by the ratio, which was two. But again, the ratio is cancelled, so it was fine. And then we can work out that the small length is three times smaller than the big length, um, or LB is three times length small. And then finally, we only need to know what the medium length is. So for this, what I did was I said that the width medium is equal to two times the height small from condition E. Uh, and then I replaced the width uh, using uh, this fact that we know. So I said the width medium is equal to length medium divided by two, and that is equal to the height small. Oh, and by the way, the reason I decided to use this equation here is because we want to know about the medium box. And here, this relates to the medium box. Um, and we know a relationship between the length of the medium box and the width of the medium box. So I could replace that straight in. Um, so I said that half the length of the medium box is two times the height of the small box, uh, or length of the medium box is four times the height of the small box. And then we could use the fact that we know that height is equal to width to say that length over width is equal to length over height, and that is equal to two. Uh, and then we could rearrange that to come up with an expression for height small in terms of length small, uh, and then pop that in to get an expression for the medium length in terms of the small length. So right now we have everything in terms of the small length. We have length medium is twice the size of the small length. We have that uh, the length of the big box is three times the small length. And we know that length small is length small. Uh, and we were told that if we add all these lengths together, then we get 2.4 meters. So I replaced all of these lengths in. So we kept length small the same. Length medium was two times length small. Length big is three times length small. And that is equal to 2.4. So we could add all these up and say that six times length small is 2.4. So length small is 0.4. The medium length was double that of the small length. So that's 0.8. And then the big length was three times that of the small box, which is 0.4. Uh, with this question, I would say it is extremely time consuming. Um, so I wouldn't waste too much time on it. I reckon if you just manage to get these equations down, like that's pretty good going. Um, and I'd hope that you get some decent marks from that. Um, but yeah, the rest of it is just a lot of work. So try not to waste too much time on nasty questions like this. Um, but yeah, I hope this has been helpful. And in my next and last video, I will be tackling some of the questions uh, that have been recognized to be more tricky. Um, and yeah, I hope this series has been helpful for you.